Welcome to episode two of The Delve, the show which asks and attempts to answer what the hell is going on. I'm Spate, and today's topic is Texas. What the hell is going on with that place? As always, it's worth noting that I'm not an expert in really anything at all, and expertise is really beyond my nature. The subjects in The Delve are meant to be a brief infatuation with and investigation into a topic, and as a result, we're bound to get lots of things wrong, to oversimplify things, and to miss out problematic details. I beg for your forgiveness in advance. That being said, I'm happy to welcome today's guest, Hannah, also known on the internet as Cuddles McGee One, who is a consummate professional in all ways and an expert in Texas. She's going to answer all of my questions to a very high standard. Hannah, welcome to the Delve. Thank you. Glad to be here. Um. In all seriousness, Hannah is a semi-normal person from Texas <laughs> with the sort of knowledge uh, of the place that might come to anyone about their own state. Um, mm. So my first question for you, Hannah, according to Wikipedia, which we all trust implicitly and never gives false information, from 1519 to 1848, various parts of Texas were under claim for five countries – France, Spain, Mexico, the Republic of Texas, and the U.S., including the Confederacy during the Civil War, which of those are you an official representative from? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is the question? <laughs> You're not an official representative from any of those places? No, I'm not an official representative of anything. Okay. I'm just like... I'm just existing. Ah, okay. I am okay. apparently officially a Texan, however, as I was born and raised here. And I think the only requirement is that you say that you're Texan and that you've been there, you know, six months plus. Six months? Well, yeah. Is that really? If you been there six months, then they don't believe you. Is that really, yeah. though, like a... um, Is that enough time to feel like a Texan? It doesn't take long to think that you're the best uh, of everything. Yeah. I see. Um, it doesn't take a long time to get a big ego, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what does it feel like to live in a state that at the moment, politically speaking, at least, is a terrible hellscape? And do you see like a big split in terms of opinions on that where you live? Or do you think you're maybe like in the minority in terms of your opinions compared to the region that you live in? Um, okay. We have to go one question at a time. How does it feel to be a Texan right now? Not good. It's very scary based on um, the viewpoints of our governor and everybody making policies in Texas. Um, my experience with it is I'm actually in a town that's very conservative leaning. And so I'm pretty opposite of a lot of the people here who are, you know, loud about their opinion, but like two hours away is Austin and they're much more um, liberal. And so you've got a good mix throughout Texas. I'm just unfortunately in one of the not so one great ones. Mm. Yeah. So there's a lot of friends from high school. They post their opinions online and I'm like, hide, mute, block. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just for anyone who isn't aware, is there anything you can tell us about what's happened there in the past few years? Maybe that's noteworthy in particular, maybe some of your governor's opinions and political decisions. Uh, there's a lot that's happened. Um, <laughs> it seems like every week something new is happening. The most recent one is our governor wants um, to not have to provide free education to children here who are undocumented. That's unacceptable. Um, they've already got a lot of really strict abortion laws. Um, they want to build a wall, a very strong wall, a, a big wall between us and Mexico. They've made it very difficult for drivers, um, the 18-wheeler drivers, to get products here. We're actually 
running out of materials currently because of that wait time. Oh. It's that's just the past few months. In the past few years, mm. uh, open carry state. Um, they feel like everybody has the right to take their gun wherever they want and do what they want for the most part. Yeah. It's a messed up place. So I'm just going to read some interesting facts that I found uh, about uh, Abbott at various points in his career. Um, as Attorney General, Abbott unsuccessfully defended Texas's ban on sex toys. He said Texas had a legitimate interest in discouraging purient, purient interests in autonomous sex and the pursuit of sexual gratification unrelated to procreation. Um, in 2015, Abbott signed the um, Pastor Protection Act, which allows pastors to refuse to marry couples if they feel doing so violates their beliefs. Uh, in 2015, he asked the state guard to monitor a training exercise called Jade Helm 15, which was, uh, you know, a military exercise uh, from the federal you know, government uh, amid internet fueled suspicions that the war simulation was really a hostile military takeover. Um, in 2018, former director of the CIA, NSA, uh, CIA, sorry, CIA and NSA, Michael Hayden said that the conspiracy theory had been propagated by Russian intelligence organizations and that Abbott's response convinced them of the power such a misinformation campaign could have in the United States. In 2017, Abbott signed House Bill 3859, which allows faith-based groups working with the Texas child welfare system to deny services quote, under circumstances that conflict with the provider's sincerely held religious beliefs. Democrats and civil rights advocates said that the adoption bill could allow such groups to discriminate against those who practice a different religion or who are LGBTQ+. Um, and LGBT rights groups said that they would challenge the bill in court. Uh, in, and also in response, California added Texas to a list of states to which it banned official government travel. Um, in the wake of the George Floyd protests, Abbott called on candidates in the 2020 elections to back the blue. In response to actions by some Texas cities to redirect funding from police to social services and emergency response, Abbott threatened that the state of Texas could seize control of the local police departments. And... Um, in 2021, he spearheaded legislative efforts to financially penalize cities in Texas that reduce spending on police, which is problematic in itself, because what if your reason for reducing spending is unrelated to any of this? Um, you can never reduce your budget. Um, in 2021, he vetoed a bipartisan criminal, criminal justice bill that would have made individuals convicted of certain crimes before the age of 18 eligible for early parole, as well as created panels to evaluate the age and the mental status of inmates at the time of their crimes when evaluating parole eligibility. He also vetoed legislation that would have prohibited police from using statements made under hypnosis in criminal court, which just makes sense because hypnosis is absolute nonsense. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just it's just basically convincing people to think some, something is true, which might not be true. Um, he also vetoed an animal protection bill, which would have made it illegal to chain up dogs without giving them access to drinkable water and shade or shelter. He guess I guess he hates dogs. Um, mm. On May 18th, 2021, Abbott signed the Texas Heartbeat Act into law a six-week abortion ban. In September 2021, Abbott signed a bill into law that prevented women from male ordering abortion medication seven weeks into pregnancy. He rejects scientific consensus on climate change. There's a whole host of problematic immigration and border opinions and actions like Hannah was talking about. Uh, there's voter suppression, 
there's terrible treatment of LGBTQ plus people. Uh, for example, he instructed Texas state agencies to treat gender affirming medical treatments, such as puberty blockers or hormone treatments for transgender, transgender youths as child abuse. Um, then there's the way the pandemic has been handled. There's the ice storm issue. Uh, as a guest on Hannity, Abbott said, this shows how the Green New Deal would be a deadly deal for the United States of America. Our wind and our solar got shut down and they were collectively more than 10% of our power grid. And that thrust Texas into a situation where it was lacking power on a statewide basis. It just shows that fossil fuel is necessary. There was an immediate response from the Energy Department of the state of, De of Texas declaring that, quote, most of Texas's energy loss um, came from failures to winterize the power generating systems, including fossil fuel pipelines. So most power plants in Texas are gas fired with wind generators providing about 10% during winter months. And since then, he has signed a bill requiring power companies to be more prepared for extreme weather events. But I wonder why extreme weather events might be a risk. Mm? Uh, because it couldn't possibly be climate change, right? Um, yeah, of course not. So, um, yeah, what do you think about all of that? I mean, Sounds good? Like Peach, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's horrible and his what he's doing is horrible and it's just to stay in office and keep lining those pockets and i i don't understand how people can be so cruel to others and that's what he does that's that's his thing mm. it's just it's very disappointing do and you think that the trees were trying to kill him <laughs> when they fell on him they knew something didn't they <laughs> they were thinking into the future mm. there's a possibility that this guy might be problematic so let's solve the problem right now didn't work so, um he's a very i don't remember sorry go ahead i don't remember exactly all the details but basically that happened he won a lot of money based on um, suing whoever he did. And then once he got into office, he made it so that other people couldn't do in the same way that he did. Uh, I don't remember mm. the details, mm. but that's the kind of person that he is. Fact checkers checked Hannah's facts. She might be spouting liberal propaganda. Um, it could be. Uh, so enough about Abbott. Uh, what about belt buckles? Um, belt buckles. Yeah. Do you... Have or have you ever had a Texas shaped belt buckle? Ooh, I don't think it was Texas shaped, but I do remember a belt buckle growing up that's got Texas on it. So, ah, okay. Yeah. Can I'm you, not um, or sure if it was mine though? Okay. Can you talk us through some of the Texas memorabilia you've seen? And do you own any of those things? I might own <laughs> something. <laughs> okay, basically, uh, so if you drive down the streets, you see Texas everywhere. It's their the on their mailboxes. It's their door knockers. It's you know, there's a Texas sign outside. Everything is Texas shaped. Um, we've got everything's bigger in Texas, and so not only do you stick the shape of the state on something but you make it bigger than normal mm. to show that it's Texas stuff. I don't have bigger than normal things like a mug, but they do have them, you know, but the statement that Texas, everything bigger, everything's bigger in Texas is in inaccurate, isn't it? Because no. the mountains are not bigger <laughs> in Texas, but we have them. But do Maybe. you really have what other states would consider to be mountains? It doesn't matter. If it mm. can be classified as a mountain, the big thing that we were taught growing up 
when we were being told how great our state was is that we are the only state that has all the different types of uh, landscaping. So we've got deserts and swamps and ocean lines and, you know, mountains. Mm. And so we've got it all. It doesn't have to look good. As long yeah, as I mean, because some of those, like the ocean, it's the Gulf of Mexico. It's not the best ocean. Like, mm. um, no. And like the mountains are kind of there. Yeah, they're. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have a viewer question. Uh, what will happen to me if I were to mess with Texas? Says Code uh, Reagan. I don't know. I just know don't mess with Texas. Basically, depending on where you are, there's no telling what would happen and what you're doing. Texas okay. are not to be messed with. They're but loaded. They're locked and loaded. How um how would you feel? Well, what do you think the result would be if I went to Texas and I talked openly about my love for Alaska and the size of Alaska? If you talked openly about your love for Alaska, totally fine. Um, I don't think that mentioning the size of Alaska will be met well. They'll, um, we know that Alaska is technically bigger, but it, it doesn't, it's not bigger. It's just technically <laughs> bigger. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. So do you think all this stuff, like the memorabilia, the... Um, that sort of thing. Do you think it's a pride thing? And if so, where does that pride come from? And is it like taught at a young age or that sort of thing? It is drilled into you. I thought that everybody had to stand up and say a pledge to their state flag growing up all 12 or 13 years in public school. And apparently you don't. And so I thought that all states had shirts with their state shape <laughs> on it and necklaces and parts of the bracelet charms, which I always found a little bit weird because some of the states look really ugly cut out, you know? Well, yeah, some of them are just squares. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought everybody did that, and apparently they don't. So, yeah, it's definitely drilled into us as, as children, and I don't know. You um, mentioned the Texas flag pledge. Do you mm -hmm. think you be able to remember the words to the texas flag pledge honor the texas flag i pledge allegiance to the texas one state under god one and indivisible it was right. drilled into us that and seems I, I taught and had to do it even longer that seems like a little bit of a ripoff various parts of that of the actual pledge of allegiance yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you do you okay and do you feel do you still feel loyal to that pledge if you ever did no oh no. then are you really no. a texan technically yes i i live here and i'm raised here i am texan but no i don't have that same sense of pride and i actually get more and more embarrassed by the state as the days go by, mm. <laughs> more laws are signed. So, it, no, I don't feel connected to that pledge at all. Mm. Honestly, I didn't know what I was saying growing up. Same thing for the United States pledge. I don't know. Yeah. Like pledging. You know, it's just something we had to do. Yeah, and you probably didn't. Did you? How did you feel when you realized that not only did other states not do that, but a lot of other countries don't have a pledge to their flags either? I was confused. I was like, wait a minute. Why not? Why are we doing this? And then I I don't like it. I'm, I don't think that we should be pledging to our state. And I don't think it should be mandatory to pledge to the country, you know, especially not as children when you don't know what you're doing. You know? Yeah. And do you think that sort of thing is trying to like foster nationalism in the case of the U S flag and maybe like a smaller, more localized version of the state level. Like, I don't know, whatever the version would be of for Texas. Like, okay. uh, yeah, because yeah, I, I think they do. Yeah. I, I, 
I should mention that I did, I have spent time in Texas. I've spent, let's see, uh, six, four, two, two, yeah, probably about 14 weeks in Texas in my life. But a lot of that was um, quite a while ago, uh, like around 20 years ago. Um, and at the time, the main things that I could tell you about Texas is that there are roads that go along the side of the freeway. Uh, Peter? Yeah, which is mm -hmm. interesting when you're not used to that. Um, it's very okay. convenient, I will say. It's yeah. super convenient. Um, and that um, it was humid. And I once I got used to the temperature, it felt cold at night, even though it wasn't cold objectively <laughs> um, mm. um and that uh yeah what else um there were a lot of bugs lots of bugs mm -hmm. um the ants were very fast compared to the ants that I, of my home we have yeah, slow yeah. ants in washington <laughs> and texas oh, fire ants yeah we didn't have those like we just have like little black ants that are really slow we didn't have like these, like you didn't have the massive ones, or hardcore like, running like, ants. Big yeah, uh, we just have like very chilled out, like ants that are just like, hey, hippie. We're yeah, like very like Seattle ants, you know, like okay. they like to have a latte or like a flat white maybe, and just like maybe work in or tech. Ice mocha, perhaps. No, not never an ice mocha because <laughs> that's uh, heresy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I did spend some time there. And then the other thing I noticed was that the sports was like a very big thing. Um, and that mm. that I was there at various times. And when I was there once, it was basketball season. And that every car had some Spurs. I was in San Antonio, but um, some Spurs flag on it. Um, and that they were really into it. Uh, and I know that like... People seem quite proud of Texas because when I was in the military, uh, there were a lot of Texans in the military and that they would, one of the first things they would tell you <laughs> is that they were from Texas, as if that were very important and <laughs> that it was integral for you to know that about their personality. It's like a defining characteristic of who they are. Um, but do do other places not introduce themselves by saying where they're from? No, because they'll be they'll be like, "Well, I'm from Texas." Blah 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 blah. Like it'll be <laughs> like in Texas we do this. In Texas, uh, I love Texas. Like Texas is the best place in the world. You know, like that mm -hmm. kind of attitude. It's kind of the thing that you get with Americans, where they'll say America is the greatest country in the world, and then but like extended to a state. So it's like America is the greatest country in the world. Texas is the best state. But the mm -hmm. weird thing about Texans is that they have this idea that um, America is the greatest country in the world. But if we didn't want to be part of America, we wouldn't have to because we're Texan. And <laughs> we were our own country once. And we can do, do it ourselves and so I just wanted to read something from the Texas Tribune. Okay. So I'm not, it's not okay. propaganda. It's real. Um, okay. Yes, Texas was it, its own country at one point. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that I know from Texas have the opinion that they can secede from the union if they want to again. Right. They have this okay. thing. Well, we made an agreement. We can leave anytime we want. Not true. Mm. Quote, Texas declared independence from Mexico in 1836 and spent the next nine years as its own nation, while the young country's leaders first expressed interest in becoming a state in 1836. The Republic of Texas did not join the United States until 1845, when Congress approved the joint resolution for annexing Texas to the United States. This resolution, was, which stipulated that Texas could, in the future, choose to divide itself into, quote, new states of convenient size 
not exceeding four in number in addition to said state of Texas is often a cause of confusion about the state's ability to secede. But the language of the resolution is clear. Texas can split itself into five new states. It says nothing of splitting apart from the United States. In the years after Texas joined the United States, tensions over slavery and states' rights mounted. Um, a state convention in 1861 voted 166 to 8 in favor of secession, a measure that was ratified by a popular vote, making Texas the seventh state to secede from the Union. After the Civil War, Texas was readmitted to the Union in 1870, yet even before Texas formally rejo rejoined the nation, the U.S. Supreme Court declared that secession was not legal, and thus, even during the rebellion, Texas continued to be a state. In the 1869 case, Texas v. White, the court held that the individual states could not unilaterally secede from the Union and that the acts of the insurgent Texas legislature, even if ratified by a majority of Texans, were absolutely null. If there were any doubt remaining after that, late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia set it to rest more than a century later with his response to a letter from a screenwriter in 2006 asking if there is a legal basis for secession. Quote, the answer is clear, end quote, Scalia wrote. Quote, if there was any constitutional issue resolved by the Civil War, it is that there is no right to secede, end quote. So, all of you are full of nonsense. <laughs> Look it up. You can't secede. Um, so, I, growing up, there wasn't a lot of talk about us seceding except for whenever a president that Texas didn't want um, yeah. was voted into office. Um, the one thing that was made very clear and drilled into our heads is that we get to fly our flag at the same height as the U.S. flag since we were once our own country. <laughs> and that is a source of great pride for Texas. I have not because looked that up. I would need to check that. that. I would need to check that. <laughs> I have no idea if that's true or not. But I know similar nonsense that I've heard from people about the American flag. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I was in the military, there was often this sort of same, uh, along the same lines. The American flag always has to be above the other country's flag, even if there's a military base in a foreign nation, they have to keep it above. Not true. It's bullshit. It's not, it's not reality. Like, that's not how it actually works on military bases. People that say that, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, so that one is interesting. I will have to check on that later because I've never heard that. Um, uh, so I've got some other questions for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Does Texas have a feel? A what? A feel. A feeling. Like a vibe. Oh. Oh, it's probably regional, depending on where you're at as to what the feel is, um, because since we are so diverse. <laughs> 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 well, for instance, you've been in Texas San Antonio. Tourism Board. <laughs> <laughs> you've been to San Antonio. There's a very large Hispanic population. The... Um, the housing looks a little bit different there. If you go into different places in Texas, it'll look different, feel different, just because, you know, where we're at, the weather is very different than if you go up into the panhandle, you know. So, yeah, it's got a different feel depending on where you're at. Um, I'm most familiar with central Texas, and so that's all that I can really speak of. And I couldn't tell you what the feel is because I don't have much to compare it to other than just other parts of Texas that I've been to. Mm. So, yeah, I think for the most part, the feel is, um, well, it's supposed to be what they talk about is, you know, the good old boys and help your neighbor out and all this other stuff. That's not actually it, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it's supposed to feel like. <laughs> then what is the actual feeling? Like, is there anything that unites the different parts of Texas that you've been to? that makes it feel like Texas or is it just completely like anywhere else where mm. 
Yeah, no, you can tell that you're in Texas because there will be a star on everything <laughs> for the Texas shape. <laughs> then you know you're in Texas. Hmm, okay. <laughs> but if you were to say like uh if you were to go somewhere with like a similar climate, like you know, along the similar latitude or whatever in another mm -hmm. state, um, do you think it would feel any different other than like the lack of stars and Texas shapes and maybe people talking about how great Texas is? Do you think it would be any different? <laughs> yeah. I don't think it'll be that different, no. That's interesting. Okay. Sorry, Reagan's, Reagan says the feel of Texas is watching no country for old men. Um, you probably don't know that film yeah. because no. it's uh, not happy. Um, oh. Mm. Uh, nonsense, then. The idea of, like, uh, Texas being exceptional in some way, because if it feels the same, then um, the... There's nothing making Texas better. The mountains aren't that good. The valleys are not special. Everywhere has valleys. Um, my state has mountains. It has the ocean. It has valleys. Um, it's got everything. It's got deserts. Plains. Yeah, it's got all that stuff. It pro probably the only thing it doesn't have is, is is the extreme heat of Texas. So it's like See? there you go. But Texas doesn't have like cold, right? I mean, aside from like a couple of years, a year ago or whenever, when the, the, it, it snowed there and it was like an apocalypse. Um, um, yeah, I think in the panhandle, they do get snow consistently. It's never going to be, you know, like yeah. what you see in Washington, but, uh, they do get that. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Do you feel, Texan. Is it something you would say like I like identify as one of your characteristics or like an integral to who you are? No. It's not integral to who I am. Um I I think that if you were to ask that same question to certain family members of mine, you would get a very different response. Mm. Um, but no, I've, and maybe if you asked me that 10 years ago, I'd be like, Oh yeah, I'm totally Texan, <laughs> very Texan, you know, but mm. no, I, I, um, I got disowned by Texas many, many years ago. Um, for two reasons. The first reason is that I do not drink sweet iced tea. Oh, is that Second part of is being that Texan? I do not like football. Yes. Oh, yeah. Apparently so. So you so have to be a fan I, of like the Cowboys or whatever. Is that what it is? The Cowboys? Is that that the football team? I think there's the Cowboys and the Houston Texans. And uh, you're uh, what I do know about um, Texas football is that if you're a Cowboys fan, you're just like deeply devoted, and if you're a Texans fan, you just really hate the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, so there's a schism. Yeah. 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 Interesting. But, yeah. Mm. but I'm pretty sure if you asked my brothers, certain certain brothers and family members, it would, it would be a very different answer. That you and do they have. drink sweet iced tea? They do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've got something exactly. now. Being a Texan <laughs> is mm -hmm. tied directly to drinking sweet iced tea sports and sports. And, drink. Mm -hmm. and eating, you know, meat. You have to be able to eat meat. So the vegan, sorry. Yeah. So Family. you've got. I guess you could do the other two. If it's like performing a like ritual, a ceremony mm -hmm. of, of being Texan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You drink some it like imbues you with texanness you know mm -hmm. like oh i feel so texan right now you feel more texan if you're drinking the iced tea so do you think people like do that specifically because it makes them feel more tied to where they're from 
not maybe. like maybe not like consciously, but like um maybe I know that uh, all my family functions on my mom's side. That's the only drink offer that you get, and so so what do you do? Have to, I have to go get water, mm. but they don't. They're, they're like. Here's your tea. <laughs> they used, they used to even just pour it. They assumed that everybody wanted the sweet tea, and I was like, no, I don't want that. And yeah, anyway, I mean, that's that was all the questions I had anyway. So uh, okay. if there's anything you want to tell us about uh, about Texas before we end, then uh, well, see, go ahead. I thought that you were going to ask me questions like, what is the state bird and stuff like that. No, no, it's so not a quiz about I'd... Texas. No, oh, no. Well. I mean, do what is the state bird? Your state bird? I do know my state the... bird, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Ours is the it's a goldfinch. Jay, I think. A goldfinch. Nice. Yours is the what? Yeah. A mockingjay, I, I think. Oh. Is that like yeah. um, Hunger Games? Oh, God, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's na- I think it's the name of one of the Hunger Games <laughs> <Mocking> movies. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Then ours is the mocking bird. <laughs> it's a mocking something. <laughs> right. Listen, I'm really good at knowing the large mammal, and that's it. All the rest of them are are up for grabs. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm gonna end there. My internet connection is dipping yet again, so uh, I just want to say thanks to Hannah. Um, and. Uh, that's uh, going to be the end of the delve for this time. Hopefully next time I'll have my internet connection sorted better. And uh, thanks for every everyone uh, who turned up and watched. And that's it. Goodbye.